Since I was a child, I was always very shy and introverted. I was a type of student who would always sit at the back corner of the classroom and never raise her hand. And not because I did not know the answers, but because I was afraid of the attention, of the judgment. Ooh, she's being smart as again. What a stupid answer. Now, as you can imagine, I wasn't the most social or outgoing of children either. But honestly, it didn't bother me because I have set my eyes on a much bigger goal. I was going to become successful in my career. So I did what I learned from other, from adults that said to study hard, get to a top uni, get a good job and then work up the ladder. And that's exactly what I did. I studied so hard, I became the top student in my class. Then in one year, I learned English and did my GCSEs at the same time. Eventually, I ended up at one of the top universities in London for finance. My life was set for success, except it wasn't. And it hit me really hard where I expected it the least. When it came to look for internships, there was always this stage that I could never pass, the interview stage. And no matter how hard I tried, I would never, never go past it. I'll be getting a rejection after rejection after rejection. Eventually, I got a rejection from almost pretty much all banks in London. Which is when I started to seriously doubt myself. This is probably not for me. I must be not good enough. They must be looking for somebody who is smarter, more talented, more hardworking. I gave it my best, but my best was not enough. So I had to give up the idea of working in finance. Now I still needed a job, so I started to apply everywhere else. And one of the companies I applied to was McDonald's. I kid you not. Though it wasn't to make burgers, uh, it was an analyst job at the office. But even so, we were talking half of the salary my other classmates were aiming for. I remember when I came to the assessment center, for the first time in my life, I felt relieved. Because for the first time in my life, the other applicants did not come from top universities. In fact, they came from universities I've never heard of. The grades were worse than mine, and they didn't have the basic skills required for the job, which I had. And I thought, finally, I'm gonna get the job. After the assessment, they invited me to the last round, to the interview. And I remember, I came there, and I saw the HR and the director. And the director looked at me. <sighs> so, why should I are you? Did you know? I have rehearsed. I have memorized my answer. But in that moment, I couldn't remember a thing. All I was thinking is, come on, I can see you've got my CV in front of you. Please just read from there. Everything about me is there. That's why you should hire me. But instead, my hands are shaking, my face turned bright red. I mumbled something. I don't even remember what I said. And I'm sure he doesn't remember either. Because the next day, I got the rejection letter. And this was an incredibly sad moment for me. 
because this time it wasn't from a competitive bank. It was from a normal job that I still could not get. Later, I learned how they did take for that position. And it turned out that they took this guy, who honestly was not the smartest of guys, in my opinion. But every time he spoke, he spoke with so much confidence, so much power, a leader type of person, I'd say. Now, I have no idea why would they need that for an analyst job where he's just going to be looking at Excel all day long. And yet, between the two candidates, one being most qualified and another being okay, but with great communication skills, the HR chose the latter. And at that point, everything became clear. Researchers from Duke and Pennsylvania universities asked the question, what skill determines a child's success the most? They observed 800 kindergarten children for 20 years. And the result was that it wasn't their intelligence. It wasn't their talent. It wasn't even their hard work that determined their success. The number one determinant of their success was strong social skills. Children with stronger social skills were more independent as adults, had higher chance of success in their career, and had a better overall well-being. All great, you'd say, but what if you, just like I am, and you were not born with these excellent social or communication skills, well then, does it mean we don't deserve to be successful? After that incident with McDonald's, I started to look for ways how I could develop my communication skills. Now, I had no idea. Seriously, how do you do that? Now, for me, uh, I identified that the worst thing I'm at is speaking under pressure. That's why I couldn't answer the question in front of the class. That's why I couldn't pass my interviews. So the natural selection for me was public speaking. So I typed into Google, how do you become a better presenter? And a bunch of articles came up. Then I typed, how do you stop being nervous when presenting? A bunch of articles came up. I read most of them. They took me to YouTube. I spent hours and hours there watching all the videos about public speaking. And then, then there was this YouTuber who was swearing by this book that if I read it, I'm going to become a successful public speaker. So I bought that and read that too. And on top of that, just to make sure, I also went to Udemy and bought their top course on public speaking to really master that skill. I felt ready. Later that year, my university asked me to present my coursework in front of the class. Just 200 people. And I thought, finally, I'm going to show them what I've learned. I remember that day as if it was yesterday. I came to the stage. See, my hands were shaking so badly, I couldn't read the damn script. Thank you, Google articles, Amazon books, YouTubers. What a great waste of my time that was. Now, of course, the problem is not in these materials. The problem was in my approach. You see, I approach learning public speaking like I approach learning everything else for uni, for school. But that's exactly the approach that does not work for learning communication skills. And after that failure, I got the courage to try something new. I joined a public speaking club. And there, there 
they didn't tell me anything about public speaking theory. There, they put me on the stage, and they were like, speak. And I spoke. And I was bad. I was really bad. But then, after the speech, somebody came to me and was like, yeah, well done. This is progress. You should do it again. And I did. Again and again and again. And you know what? After six presentations, my hands stopped shaking. And my voice took out confidence. And this is when I learned that in order to learn a communication skill, you need to practice it even before you're ready. Practice it again and again and again until you get the skill. But that was only one part of the equation. After six presentations, my progress has really slowed down. I still wasn't where I wanted to be. And this, when this came in. This is feedback given by club members to every single presenter after their speech. They contain recommendations. Please use more of the stage. Please speak louder. Please smile more. And these, these were gold because they contained the answer. Now in real life, of course, nobody comes to you and is like, hey, I think you should have been more friendly with me. I recommend you to smile more. Please, here is my feedback. <laughs> Nobody does that. And this is when it becomes your responsibility to actively collect that feedback. You might say, hold on, are you saying that if I did something pretty badly, I should go out there and ask people how bad I did? Absolutely! Except you don't ask how bad you did, you ask how can I improve? And feedback after feedback after feedback, you will see the difference yourself. And when I learned that, when I learned that was the second part of the equation, my public speaking went through the roof. I started to speak in front of thousands of people and even win international public speaking competitions. I was so excited about the result, but also I was so excited about finally learning that formula to learning a new communication skill. So I started to look for other skills I wanted to develop. Now a difficult one for me is speaking on the spot. I'm prepared. So you know when there are group discussions and somebody asks you, so what's your opinion on this? And you go, uh, and then the moment is gone, you think of a thousand things you could have said, actually good ones. That happened to me all the time. And this time to learn this skill, I skipped the bit of Googling altogether and I went straight to practice. I joined improv theater. For those who don't know, improv theater is when they put you on the stage in front of all these people and they start to scene you know nothing about. And you just have to complete it. You don't even get a second to think. You just do it. And again, I follow the same approach. Practice feedback. Practice feedback. And eventually, I came up, came up with a new skill. The skill of improper speaking. And just like that, you can learn any communication skill whether it's for your career or for your personal life. For example, there was this day when my husband came home really tired and started to complaining about his work problems and issues. And uh, at the end, he said something no husband should ever tell his wife. He said, you are the most cold-hearted person on the planet. 
was like, why? You came to me with your problems. I listened to you. I gave you some advice, gave you some solutions. It was like, exactly. I didn't ask for solutions. All I need is you just to listen and support me. Harsh. But feedback. <laughs> so I accepted it. And next time we spoke, I practiced it. And just like that, I learned how to speak with empathy. And now we reached a new level of understanding with my husband. So the skills could be different, but the process is always the same. Practice feedback, practice feedback. Do it enough times and you get a skill at the end. So do you want to learn how to persuade? You can. Do you want to learn how to manage conflict? You can. Do you want to learn how to be funny? You can. Actually, can you just learn that? I could you not. But the process is always the same. And if I, a shy and confident girl, who could even answer one thing in front of the class, could later speak in front of thousands, and if I, a person, who couldn't pass a single job interview, could later acquire enough communication skills to open her own business, if I could do all those things, just imagine the type of things you will be able to do once you start working on your communication skills.